everyone, this is Chris Keys for From Your Guitar. Today we're hanging out at the High Watt in Nashville, Tennessee with Missy from Mannequin Pussy. Missy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Hi. Hey. Well, hello. It was great to meet you and uh, it was great little intro music there. Uh, as you were playing before, it was a little quiet, so you kind of have both sides of the coin. Super aggressive and loud and very quiet and beautiful. Always. That's, I feel like, the, the um, dynamic of like the human spirit. Yes. You're either feeling a little quiet or you're feeling like aggressive on top of the world. <laughs> My fiance would probably say I'm a little more towards the aggressive side, but we're trying to work on that. So anyways, we're not here about my problems, we're talking about guitars. Now people normally associate you with you over here, Mean Green, but you got a reverend for this tour. I did, yeah. So so my uh, Fender Strat that I guess now you've made me aware has become kind of a recognizable guitar. Yeah. Um, I bought after my house got broken into in Philly and I had just bought like a new Jaguar for myself. It was like the first guitar I really, well it was, it was the second guitar I bought, but it was like the first guitar I spent money on. Yeah. And my house got broken into and it got stolen and we were leaving in like three days for our first ever tour. And so I went on Craigslist and bought this uh, beautiful Mexican Strat for like $300 and it's been my guitar for like six years. Now, is there anything that you've done to it, obviously, other than maybe the pick guard, I assume, but isn't what came with it? Uh, this is actually exactly how it is. The things I okay. did at first were kind of like just aesthetic things. Like, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of uh, the like kind of varnish. Okay. So I wanted to like mat it out so it just, you know, you don't like really see too much of Sweat marks on love, it. And yeah. I, think, I think it just like looks cooler this way. Uh, but also like swapped out the pickups for something a little bit better, swapped out the neck. Um, my friend Kyle Agnella. Uh, who uh, works in Philly, shout out to Kyle, has done like all the work on my guitars, so he got it to the place it is, but I realized going into this tour, I was like, I think, I'm, I, think I deserve like a new guitar now, so I'm gonna buy myself something new and nice. Treat yourself. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Now, before we say goodbye to the Strat, is the, uh, do you remember what pickups that your uh, Philly friend put in there? I don't. Okay. Just want to make sure we got that covered. And I could text them. No, well, <laughs> that won't help with the camera right now. <laughs> but let's move on to the Reverend. Why did you land on this? Because as we were talking off camera, I know it's like to Ken and Penny because they have an awesome company and a great family over there. But Reverend's not a company that you, know, you see at a lot of the guitar stores and stuff. I'm kind of surprised by that, honestly, because I think Reverends are so sick. Uh, I first got introduced to Reverends when we were on tour in Europe. Oh wow! And uh, we played a show where we I broke a string, and the opening band we didn't have a backup guitar then, so the opening band graciously was like, "Oh, like let me use my guitar." And then the moment I plugged in, I was like, "What the fuck is this guitar? It sounds <laughs> so good. Everything I have sounds better now." I'm sorry, like I'm sorry like little strat but <laughs> it sounded it's just it, it it just like was exactly the sound i feel like i had been looking for in my head just didn't know uh -huh. and then after that show i was talking to the guy who owned that guitar and he's like oh yeah that's a reverend like it's all about the p90s and then from there i did like a deep dive into the p90 world and was like oh like okay what i need is like a jet stream 390 and i i feel like i'll finally have found the sound i've been chasing after for a long time and i got this guitar just like a month ago, right before tour started. Now, as you kind of you've toured and you made your way to Nashville through the tours, tour stops. What uh, do you like about the P90s versus kind of being familiar with the Strat and the single coils? They're not as loud. Is one of the things like there's a lot more kind of just like feedback noise that I like to eliminate, especially during quiet songs. Uh -huh. I feel like since our set is so dynamic, I feel like there's a lot more stability to these. Like mm -hmm. when I'm playing quiet parts, there's just not as much like hum and stuff. Uh, yeah, there's just not as, as uh, that hum, that extra like noise kind of gets like eliminated and mm -hmm. a little bit equalized. Um, and so it's it's really nice, like especially for any time you're playing something. Usually when I would like with the Strat, there'd still be that extra hum. Yeah. And when you're trying to create tension and like just create a moment in, with something, having those extra noises, I feel like kind of just sonically takes you out of it a little bit. And what about strings do you use? Strings and tunings, I guess I should say. Uh, I play in standard. We only have one song that's in drop A. Okay. I think probably. Oh, wow. <laughs> so like we're either in standard or, or drop A. Um, <laughs> it's a hell of an extreme there, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> it's one <good> song. <laughs> uh, but uh, for these, I use the Ernie. Case candy. Yep. The Ernie Ball, skinny top, heavy bottoms. I really love these strings. Uh, 
our friend Robert at Ernie Ball introduced me to them. And I really, I mean, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but I've, I've only changed my strings like three times on this five week tour. Well, and it just speaks to really the life hard. of them. You yeah, know what I mean? there's definitely a life. I really like the heavy bottoms, like, especially for any kind of solo y shit. It's nicer to have like a little bit more bend than uh -huh. like a straight, like, you know, 11s across the board that just get, I don't know, I find those to be really heavy after weeks and weeks of playing. Yeah. Your hands also kind of start to get cramped and stuff. And with these, it's just like a lot more maneuverability and it feels a lot better. I like that word, maneuverability. <laughs> now, before we say goodbye to the guitar, at least in terms of like speaking about it, Reverend is known for their bass contour knob. Now, have you spent much time with that? Do you use that much? Is it something that you even really even go to? You know, honestly, I didn't even know what that is. <laughs> I, I, I think it like rolls, it's a different thing than like a tone control. Like rolls off the bass, I think. I, I'm not oh, sure, because okay. I don't have Reverend, never played it, but I know that's something they have in all their models and it's some, sometimes their artists really like. Interesting. Well, I mean, that's like a good opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about this guitar, because like, again, I've really only had, had it for a month, so we're, we're learning more about each other. And you're not been kind of able to like experiment as much like you would in the studio at home, like you're just going on stage and playing. Exactly, like we're just, for like the last month, I've only been doing sound check and then performances, so there hasn't really been a lot of time to yeah. truly explore it. Well, let's go. Actually, I was going to look down at the pedal board, but we got to talk about the amp first because yes. there's some cool, cool points of note here. So what should we know about this amp? Because Dark Matter is a cool spot in Nashville. Yeah, Dark Matter is a Nashville spot. Yep. Uh, it's, they're an incredible collective of artists who do DIY shows and like mutual aid organization in Nashville. Um, they did not make this amp, but... Um, or this head, uh, but this is like a boutique head. Uh, this guy in New Jersey builds these, these like they're based off of trainer heads. Okay. I use it on our second record, like the brother of this amp, or of uh, of this head. So uh, when I found out that he had another beta in production, I was like, oh, I I would actually love to buy that if if you're willing to sell it. And he never created an insignia or anything or like a logo for his stuff. It was huh. called Dark Moon. So when I got the Dark Matter sticker, I was like, oh, that's that's like... Close enough. That's close <laughs> enough, exactly, and I love Dark Matter, so to to have them on my on my head every night, I feel like it's great. And then one of my favorite things about <laughs> yeah. this also is just that instead of like on and standby, it's, it's bring it and quiet. So when we're ready to fucking bring it, like, you know exactly what's up. I feel, yeah, that like adds a little bit more to it, I feel like, that right before you hit the stage and you're about to rock, that... that it lets you know you got to bring it. Exactly, it's like this like psychological switch. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I have to, I have to see bring it to be like, all right, it's time. Marissa's gonna stay back there, and Missy's coming out because she's about to bring it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you get hip to this company? Because I've never heard of the guy that built them, and, and you know that you're in the Philly area, so you're in the area. But you know, Jersey is a connection to Philly. But how did you get hooked up to this guy and this company? And what he does? Uh, our second album, Romantic, our uh, we worked with our friends Chris Beglivo and Evan Bernard, and uh, the man who created this head was a friend of Evan's. Okay. So that's how they had the other head in the studio, which is what I ended up using for all my guitar parts on that record. And then I just really fell in love with the sound. And then actually, I mean, for the last couple of years, I haven't. This has kind of just been sitting in the practice space because I used the twin reverb for a long time. Okay. Um, and then when Max joined the band, it was pretty imperative for us that they use a uh, twin reverb for all the lead stuff mm -hmm. to just like have that, that brightness and that, you know, what twin reverbs do. Yeah. And I didn't have, I couldn't possibly buy a Reverend and a new amp. So yeah. I was like, I'll just like dust this off again and, and bring it back out. So it's been, it's been great. And then the cab is just like some speakers and a bunch of woods. So. <laughs> yeah, you said off camera, <laughs> which is perfect. <laughs> well, we've got those covered. Let's talk about your pedal board here. Okay. Now, what do you think is like the pedal you use the most or that you enjoy using the most? Uh, the pedal I use the most is definitely this double rock. It's pretty much on every song. I've like searched for years for just like what I consider to be the perfect distortion sound. And I absolutely found it with this J. Mascus designed uh, double rock pedal with by z -Bex. What, I, It's just perfection to me. What you know when you see J, uh, J on a pedal, you know it's it's gonna bring loudness. Exactly, <laughs> and that's like what I want. I mean, I, I used it like a DS1 for a very long time. Yeah. So, you know, like the introductory boss distortion pedal, which is perfect and like I would never knock it, but you know, when you're starting to look for that, that, that right combination that has like clarity so that you're 
you know, even though you're playing distortion, like if you have any sort of like interesting voicings that you're doing, you still kind of like want those to come through yeah. harmonically. And I found that to be a challenge because a lot of distortions just kind of like compresses everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It compresses, it squashes, and then you like don't get that clarity. Um, but this double rock, I just fucking adore because it does everything that I wanted to do. And it's two sides, right? So it's like there, there's, I guess, two kind of. Yeah, so it used to be like uh, the box of rock was like the Zvex uh, big distortion, and yep. then I guess Jay Mascus went to them and was like, "I want two boxes of rock in like one <laughs> package." In one package, so they they essentially do the same thing. I kind of use like this side as a distortion and this side as a boost. Okay. And but oftentimes I have them engaged at the same time anyway, just to have that like extra like lift. All right, Missy, can you show us kind of different the two sides of it and how you use it? Yeah, sure. So uh, usually if I'm like doing a kind of introductory like rhythm thing. this one down <laughs> before it hurts itself or something else yeah uh, yeah I think the just that second that second stomp just has that extra growl that you want sometimes and you're like really kicking into a part and before we move on from the double rock is there could you just play a chord through the just so we can kind of hear the amp by itself yeah uh, just, just, just the amp alone there. so pretty clean very clean and then you let all the the pedals do the talking yeah, there's not many moments of just like pure clean yeah. on like any of our live performances. And then when there is, are you just rolling off the volume, uh, either on the guitar or you have the Ernie Ball volume down here yeah, too? Yeah, exactly. I'll kind of like roll it down a little bit or usually for like those quieter parts, it's like when I'm engaging like either reverb or delay to, okay. so that it's like, it's clean but it still has lift. Uh-huh. And so I see you have a hoof on the board. Yes. Um, this is my most recent acquisition and I... In the same way where I felt like I spent so much time searching for what I consider to be like the perfect distortion sound, I've spent double that amount of time searching for like the perfect fuzz sound. Uh, my main problem with fuzzes is that they're like so intense and so encompassing that you lose any note value. Yeah. And so that it just becomes this like, you know, like this wild west of like <laughs> waves and shit. Yeah. And like when I, I was looking for a fuzz to kind of give that extra like lift to lead lines. And so obviously when you're doing lead lines, you don't want to lose that note value. You don't want to yeah. lose that like kind of like harmonic value. So this hoof, um, I think I tried it at um, where I bought my Reverend, at Russo Music in Philly. And at, when I was getting the Reverend, I was like, I also really need a fuzz because I just got tired of the fuzz that I had. and swapping out so many and then when I tried this hoof it was like an immediate like this is exactly the, the fuzz I've been looking for. Now before we hear the fuzz and then how you use it with the double rock because that was you had both pedals engaged on the intro is do you find yourself buying more gear through online and doing research that way or do you go to your store and have like your gear guru buddy give you tips or do you like to you know mess around with pedals in store touch it feel it hear it? Definitely like when I think when it comes to buying pedals that's you know that's always an investment in store and so I'll spend a ton of time like doing research talking to friends people who kind of are familiar with them and then if I can you know support your local yeah. music store I'd rather go in person and try to try to buy something there not always the case but um, often enough the case do what you can yeah so let's hear the hoof and then let's hear how you use it with the double rock so usually with the double rock I think like one uh, place I can think of
level up a little bit more. I mean, you <laughs> got to bring it. Will, but yeah, I have to bring <laughs> it a little bit more. But um, that's like usually how I, I use it. It's either for moments like where we're like kicking in and we're adding like more subs from our Moog and stuff to just like increase that, that heaviness. Yeah. Or for single note solo stuff where you really want them to like ring pop. out. Pop, yeah. Pop out. Now, are you always using it in conjunction with the double rock or is it ever used it by itself? Um, it's used by itself one time in the set, uh, or not uh, by itself, but in- um, With the other pedals. With the use of the Strymon Big Sky, there's a moment in High Horse where things are very like quiet and they're pretty, but then you're getting to the heavier part of the song. And then when we all kick in, Much kind of like as we're talking about the other pedal, very much like Dinosaur Jr. Yeah. High and low. Yeah, I'm very into quiet, loud, quiet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now the last two pedals here, besides you have a uh, looks like a looper or a vocal pedal for for the uh, Roland Roland Boss VE20 that I'm sure you just use for vocals. Yeah, I just use the Boss VE20 like only for our more aggressive songs when I uh, want to have distortion. Okay. Um, distortion is obviously like a pretty messy thing to do live. Vocally, yeah. Um, and it's something that like any artist in a pug band, you're probably putting distortion on your yeah. vocals in the studio. So I like to be able to recreate that sound live. Um, so I got that VE20 a few years ago just to just engage distortion and then like, you know, throw a little extra fancy shit on it for yeah. lives that like really soars but has a lot of bite to it. Because um, again, like you, you don't want to crunch things so much that you can like no longer hear melody, yeah. but you want them to have attitude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the last two pedals, uh, you got the Electro Harmonics and the Big Sky. Which one do you want to talk about first? Um, I'll talk about the, the My Memory Boy, My Electro Harmonics Memory Boy. This is a... Not as often used, like, I, I, there's honestly no reason for me to have the deluxe version of this because, like, I'm never, like, tapping in tempo, like, I'm not looping anything. Um, I just love the sound of this delay so much. Um, I'm pretty much always, like, kind of swapping this in and out in conjunction with the MXR, uh, or what is it, the, the carbon copy delay? Yeah, which is much smaller. Yeah, much smaller, um, lighter, but I... I don't know. I'm like I'm constantly being like, oh, I like the sound of this delay more. Or, no, no, no. I think I like the memory boy more. I don't know. So they're kind of just like, you know, they're like my brother sister delay that kind of gets like swapped. They're like vying for your attention. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, anything tricky with the big sky that you use because it is such a complicated pedal that can do so much. The big sky, I, like we were talking about earlier, I would say it's like my most expensive pedal that I use the least, um, but I think is so important like i would be devastated to not have it um also to quote Tim yeah Robinson, i was gonna say yeah like there's just so many knobs and i often feel when i look at it like i don't know what any of the shit is and i'm scared <laughs> and i just like know the sound i'm going for but i i really don't know how to use this pedal as well as i i should and i think that's gonna be uh once we're done with touring again like something that i'm spending a lot more time on is, is understanding this to the best of my ability. But it's just capable of so much and it has, I mean, just like when it comes to reverb, I've never heard a better sounding reverb. And then you got it, so people at home know, it's uh, on the detune setting. It kind of has that warble, a little bit of modulation. Exactly, and like whenever this is being used alone, you're, my, my goal is to kind of create like that unsettling feeling. Yeah. Something that's like beautiful, but you're like, wait, this is kind of, feels off a eerie. little bit. Yeah, eerie. Exactly, it's eerie, so that's why I kind of like it. It's like the first scene of like a horror movie. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, it's, uh, this like, is oh, great. Things are going great. You're like, going oh, to I, the party. I have a feeling of my knees now. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and it's also, I love it for like big solo stuff because uh, there's a few times in the set where, you know, have like bigger solos and things, and that's when I engage like all four pedals at once um, for, those, for those big moments, and I feel like this Strymon, especially this like shimmer setting, just adds this like, this pop, this like beauty, this like lift to solos that is always, um, it, it's borderline shrill. It's like, I'm always like battling against this, it like too much of it becoming too shrill, but when it's mixed properly and we have an excellent runner house person, shout out to G, 
um, it's controlled in such a way where I feel like those moments of lift have like a lot of beauty in them too. So they're, they're not just like pound your face yeah. like rock solos. There's like moments in it too. That There's some beautiful. pristineness to it. Yeah. Well, I, I I'll get you out of here on this uh, because I don't know if people can see, but you have a boot on. I do. And I'm curious, are you using that to engage your pedals? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I usually- You really are, yeah. I am because I'm not really supposed to put like weight on it. Yeah. So I have been using the boot to, and so like it definitely has made for like a few moments of like, oh shit, I hit the wrong thing. Like, <laughs> oh fuck, like this fucking boot. Um, That's punk rock. Though. Yeah, but I'm making it. I'm making it work, and I'm not. I'm not fucking up our set too much, so it's it's going okay. Well, awesome, Missy. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, we're gonna, thank we're gonna you. talk to the big man on bass. Very nice to to talk to you. Now we are just slightly to the left, your right. Bear, how you doing, friend? I'm doing good. How are you? Very well. Thank you for doing this. I know it kind of caught you off guard. We're like, you want to talk? You're like, hell yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I would let's... love to show you the little workstation I got here. Well, let's <laughs> go with your little instrument here. So I got this guy. It's uh, it's actually a Fender Player Series, um, like just the yellow bass. Um, and to be honest with you, most of it is uh, the standard setup that they came to set. I changed out this part. It's actually... Um, uh, I think it used to be called a fat ass bridge, oh, yeah. but they they took them and I believe Fender re renamed it not fat ass, but it's a bridge still. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I had that mostly replaced, but most of it is actually pretty still stock. Uh, and uh, I'm using some uh, Ernie balls, uh, the purple pack, I guess you could say. Uh, I think it's like yeah, it's a purple pack. Power okay. power slinky. Power yeah, slinky. Yeah, yeah. Nice, man. And are you playing with a pick or are your fingers are kind of hybrid? Both? So I, I would definitely say hybrid. There's like certain songs where like I do like to like play with my fingers and I'll play like up here, like get more on the actual like frets. And then sometimes when the song is like ripping and I'm just going to like just smack it up with the pick. Yeah. Kind of so. whatever you need it to be. Yeah, exactly. It depends on the song, the feel. Yeah. Cool. Now, is that, like, how long have you had this bass, and are you, like, this is kind of, like, your home bass? I would say Fender has been, like, my home oh. bass for a minute. Uh, uh, I, this is my second Fender bass. No, actually, my third. Uh, this is actually my second uh, P bass. That's I had right. a jazz for a while. I didn't, I didn't bring it on this tour, but um, I played jazz for a long time, actually, in this band, and... It was fun, and then uh, we went on tour with uh, Turnover, and um, I broke a string, and uh, the the bassist was like, "Yeah, you can use mine." And then I, I played it, and I was like, "What have I been doing? <laughs> it's like I should have been using this the whole time." And then uh, when that tour was over, I remember him being like, "Yo, you better you better get a P bass." And I was like, on the phone with Fender, I'm like, "Can you send me something? You send me this." Nice. And it's been been my girl ever since. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Not home yeah. base of your home base. I meant like you're more a P or J guy, and so you're more a P guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely more a P guy now. Is it because like I know is it tonally or is it because I know that a lot of times that people gravitate towards jazz because of the thinner necks. So I would definitely say that uh, I'm definitely bigger on the the thicker neck, the wider neck now. Like I mean I. I think I didn't know what I was doing at the time when I had the J bass, and then when I was playing it in, in this band, I was like, yeah, this is great. But then when I switched over and having like the actual width versus like it narrowing down at the top, or I should say tapering, whichever, yeah. <laughs> I was definitely like, oh, wait, this this makes so much like walking so much easier and stuff. So definitely more of a fan of the P now. Cool. But well, I'll take a J any day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, <hell> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> what about the orange? Have you been a Terra guy for a long time or? This is actually uh, actually another new guy. Um, so I, I will say I'm, I'm a true PV cultist. I have always really? played with uh, PV Musician's Head. I have a 5150 that I swear by Ooh. to the day I die. People give a lot of flack, but Perry's a big fan. And if you go down on Broadway, they, you see a lot of those guys playing PVs too. Yeah, no, they're great. They last forever. You can probably get a nice head for a buck fifty. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of it's not too bad. But uh, I had it for like the longest time. But also with those with those like they're kind of large and lunk, you know clunky. Yeah. And they're also easy to break. So like we went on a tour where we like got across the nation with it. Like not even played our first show. It got across the nation and it broke at the first show. And I was like crap. And uh, at the time I was just like I need to just get something new, something that I also can feel more comfortable with. It. And uh, I looked up this. Went to a store, played it, and I fell in love like immediately. I was like, oh, sick. I have something that's still like biting, heavy, 
like very brighter than most PVs, but it's nice. And uh, it also just sits, you know, right on top of my cab very nicely. I like to, I don't- hold <laughs> Debo in place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like to <laughs> like, you know, I have to like, I need room. I don't want some giant head. And then I'm like, where am I gonna put my drink? You know, so. <laughs> Now, is that something you used with uh, the new EP that came out perfect? With the new EP, we actually used uh, a Fender Bassman. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's, they're, they're beautiful. They're great. But also they sound, huge. but they're also, yeah, it's like, I think like 80 or 90 pounds, and like, I'm not trying to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Where this is like, yeah, this thing is power. I barely actually crank. If you see right now, it's like barely hitting three, and that's already pretty loud. Yeah. Like, so I never really have to go juice it too much, but uh, maybe we'll hit a stadium one day and I can. Really goose Crank it, it out. Get, it, get it to like five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now let's talk about your pedal board because uh, you know a lot of times bass players are just you know into the amp and here we go. But you got you got some colors here. Yeah, I uh, I will say these are I so with the new album and like I would say like with our live setting uh, like you know you hear the album you're gonna hear Manic Pussy you're gonna be like oh wow yeah the bass is driving and so on yeah. but I like to be a freak on stage so there's like Ooh. a lot of pedals are for you know to keep the songs and you know driving and then some parts are truly for the freaky nasty parts that happen live and and uh, yeah I got some yeah some walk us ones. through it you got some cool pedals yeah. and one that I've never heard of so talk to me and yeah. show us how you're using them so like right here that's just a tuner pedal but this one is uh, my uh, it's called by uh, the don't shred on me by abominable pedals <laughs> it's uh, that's so a it's, great name yeah it's kind of sick it's a uh, funny story is like we, we were on tour and I had originally um, Electro Harmonics uh, Big Muff Bass. Okay. And that was like, I used to just have a tuner, Big Muff Bass, and call it a day. Yeah. And um, it bro uh, I left it in Austin. I like didn't <laughs> pack it. it yeah, I left it behind. <laughs> it sucked. And then um, we went to North Carolina, and uh, the owner of the pedal company, like, somehow was just like at the show hanging out. And I was like, yeah, I just like need a distortion pedal. And he was like, I want this like right here in my bag. And it's, that's the pedal right there. And he awesome. just. And I was like, oh, cool. Can I borrow? He said, you can have it. <laughs> And I, I, it's not left my board since. That's it's awesome. Truly the best sounding pedal, I think, distortion wise and all. You wanna give yeah, it? Yeah, give me yeah. an eight. Give me like just the amp and then kick that sucker around. All right, so this is just clean, like. And this is the pedal. saying before we start rolling that you know a lot of times you've had seen distortions and fuzzes that and especially in the bass application you lose all that low end but yeah this is designed to not yeah that's it's like my favorite distortion pedal I've had for bass truly like it like they say you can use it for guitar but because like yeah it's cloned after the rat pedal and like yeah when you pump the distortion you can see you can just hear the low end drop this thing like like that is like the distortion not even fully pumped in like it has a beautiful blend knob so you can still keep your your uh, your head sound while going with the distortion, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's it's just amazing. <laughs> I read, like more more pedals, you know, pick up pick up what what this company is doing. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the don't shred on me. Yeah, don't shred on me. Now, Bit Commander is a pedal I see. I own one, but mm. I am a guitar player. Mm. How are you using it for bass? So that goes back into what I was saying like the freaky stuff. So there's definitely uh, we go into some crazy jam outs or just some gnarly stuff. And then I'll just kind of like hit it with a bunch of these, just like a. I like just let that shit rattle <laughs> for a while. Yeah, in the wind. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's protecting the speakers. <laughs> Man, yeah. that's. That's but, huge. Yeah, it's it's kind of disgusting. Like, um, eventually we'll be used in a song. <laughs> and it'll be like, people will be like, what's going on? So, but yeah, for the most part, I just get as crazy as I can. And sometimes like loop this through, like, I have this other, uh, uh, the same uh, from Earthquake or Devices, like the Afterneath, yep. which is like just a delay pedal, but just sometimes just sending it through, like, Sustain all the way through, like. Uh, Dang. If anybody's you know ever seen us, uh, you know that we like to get weird. So <laughs> every awesome. once in a while, I like to. I don't want to leave the crowd just thinking like, oh, the song's just over. It's just like 
we want to build them to get ready for the next song. Yeah. And, yeah. Scare them a little. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Missy was doing over there. Yeah. Now. How do you use delay? Is it kind of the same thing? It's kind of interludes in between songs? Yeah, so this one is just mostly for a swell that I, I'll, I'll just use to just hit like, ooh, once it's on. Like uh, we had a we had a couple of songs where we had like uh, just like as things are swelling and Kaylin is just like going ape shit. <laughs> I'll just keep that going. I can rest my hands for a sec <laughs> and just <laughs> get a drink. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I would say the delays mostly just get like it's just like weird effects. I don't. I wouldn't say I, I, there's like too many songs where I'm like going too hard or even on the clean. Yeah. Well, I know that you guys kind of like surprisingly, in in your own words, busted through that five song EP perfect. Is there anything on the horizon that you want to tease? Are you guys looking to record soon for 2022? We we got some things cooking. We're working on some things. Yeah, I don't know what the recipes are, but you'll see something in the kitchen soon. <laughs> oh, awesome, Bear. Thank you so much for hanging. Oh, yeah. Missy's off stage. Thank you so much, everyone out there. Stay safe. Keep rocking. Later, y'all.